as they are uh, going for that fourth position. Bobby Allison has it, but Buddy Baker has been challenging him for several laps now, and you can see how Buddy is running that low line, just as he explained a little bit earlier to us. That's where he likes to be because, simply, that's the fastest way around Talladega. Baker has been the cream in recent laps, meaning he started in seventh about four laps ago, and he's been steadily rising. He just passed Dale Earnhardt about a lap ago. Bobby Allison is next up. Son Davey should be next. You can see Earnhardt, the yellow car still in the picture. But Buddy Baker, who has a lot of sentiment on Jenner and Berger, has one of the real friends. Oh, we Bobby have a problem. Is blowing the tire. Bobby Allison with a horrible crash here on the front stretch. It has torn out a complete section of protective railing separating it. Alan Kowicki becomes involved. Debris and is collecting other cars. There is a lot of debris in the front stretch. Kowicki was involved. Richard Petty, I think, is another one of the cars. Uh, lots of debris on the front stretch. Now, Bobby's car, to me, appeared to stay together quite well. He did get up into the fencing, but not into the stands. And it was close, though. He has torn out a whole large area of guardrail. There it is, protecting the crowd from the racetrack. And he came very, very close to going into the stands. The car became airborne and went flying, literally, into that wall and catch fencing. But fortunately, it did stay onto the racetrack. Bobby Allison is moving around in the race car, and that is certainly good news for us, but he has to be quite shaken after a tremendous crash. The red flag has been brought out, and quite frankly, Larry, I think we're going we're, to have to yeah. be red for quite a while we because we cannot race with that protective fencing in the shape that it's in. It's just not safe for the spectators. It's pretty obvious uh, why it was there happening, happening right underneath Harold Kinder. Uh, it wasn't the fence that caught him, but they have built the cement wall here at Talladega just a little taller Bobby's than most racetracks. There's Bobby getting out of the car. I told you that Bobby's car, though, was heavily damaged and did stay together. The integrity of the roll cage is intact. The crowd is giving Bobby a, a very warm welcome out of that machine, but the car lived up to NASCAR standards. Larry, I think a tire blew. I think oh, I saw a tire coming apart absolutely. while he was right here in the tri-oval right nearing rear. the starting line. Right rear, it begins to shred, and the car goes out of control. You're at 210 miles an hour. You can see the right rear going. You see the debris there on the left-hand side of your screen. Earnhardt avoids Bobby. The car goes backwards. The aerodynamics get underneath the car, and Allison gets up into the fence. The aerodynamics lifted the car. They're not built to go backwards. Right underneath Harold Kinder. Harold... He stayed in there. Boy, I'll tell you, talk about a trooper. Kinder is right there. He's got the yellow flag out right away. That is a veteran, confident flagman. Here comes the rest of the field down. They've decelerated to maybe 180 miles an hour, but all the debris, there's Petty, there's Kowicki spinning. Uh, there's just nowhere for many of these drivers to go because there's so much of what was left over from the initial impact on the front stretch, and there was just nowhere to go. And tires began to explode, too, as they ran over debris caused by the Allison crash. Well, it's very rare that you see that catch fencing do its job, but it sure did its job here at Talladega today. As If it hadn't been there, or if it had not been as strong as it was, Bobby Allison's car would very clearly have gone into the grandstand right below us here in the broadcast booth. There's a the tire going. Here's another angle of it, and uh, we'll just let you watch it because we've covered it well. There goes Darrell Waltrip going by without becoming involved in it but as I said as the cars came down now they were running over the debris of the Allison car and tires were blowing and therefore they became involved in the crash there's Petty Alan Kowicki Phil Parsons, Phil Parsons uh, yeah. made contact with the Bobby Allison car we understand that is brand new catch fencing up here and boy we just uh, salute the people here at Talladega for building it as strong as they did. There is a stretcher that we can see down there, a couple of stretchers as a matter of fact, being lifted into the grandstand area, so perhaps there were some spectators that were hit by flying debris. All right, Phil Parsons did make contact with the Bobby Allison car. Let's go to uh, Jerry Punch. Well, Phil Parsons still sitting in the car on pit road. The total, the back of the car is just about sheared away at that Copenhagen Oldsmobile, and Parsons talking to the crew chiefs. Uh, apparently his day is over with. I don't think the car will be fixable. They're going to try to bring it behind the wall. Maybe we'll get a comment with Phil in just a moment and find out exactly what happened down there. 
All right, so Phil gathering his thoughts, and uh, you can see him sort of gesturing to his crew. I really don't know what happened, but I became involved. There, meanwhile, is the Bobby Allison car that has come to a rest between the start-finish line and turn number one. The ambulances are there. The track crews are there cleaning up the debris. Well, we will go inside now, Cale Yarborough's car, and see how it looked to him. There he is following behind Greg Sachs, the Valvoline number 50. The action is beginning to unfold. It's already unfolded up in front of him, and there's Kale trying to weave his way through all the pieces lying on the ground. You can see that Greg Sachs goes into a spin. Greg made a left turn, a right turn. There's Kale. Mm. He's trying to avoid Rusty Wallace. He goes sideways. He goes up, gets along the outer wall. I think he avoided significant contact. He brings it back around. It does a reverse spin as he is beginning to fight at the wheel. And now he can use the banking to coast down to the bottom of the racetrack, crank it to the right, try and get that thing to start back up again. The red light comes on indicating that the engine has been stalled and then Cale Yarborough can get back around. A scary moment for Cale Yarborough and a scary moment for many of these drivers who became involved in this Bobby Allison crash in the trial. There is Richard Petty who was also spinning trying to avoid the cars that were in front of him. A comment, by the way, about Phil Parsons, whose car does appear to be terminally damaged. He was one of the dark horse favorites. As many of you who follow Winston Cup racing know, many times a dark horse will win here at Talladega. And Davy Allison, Sterling Marlin, and Phil Parsons um, are three of the people who had not won here recently that uh, were definite threats for today. Once again, a replay from the in-car camera of Cale Yarborough. This is at uh, real speed, so it will be just as Cale saw it. It appeared as if Cale pretty much had it saved, but was hit a couple of times and then lost control. Yeah, he got hit from behind. There's no question about that. You could hear it uh, with the audio. All right, uh, let's go to Jerry Punch again and uh, Phil Parsons. Well, Phil still sitting in the car on pit road trying to get the helmet unhooked. And uh, Phil, what happened out there? I have no idea. Uh, you know, they, my spotter came on the radio and told me there's a big crash in the front stretch. So I was, I was slowing way down right here in the travel and got slowed down pretty good. I was waving my hand because I was in a bunch of traffic and. Uh, I was slowing, I probably slowed down to 70 or 80 miles an hour just picking my way through the debris and somebody hit, hit me from behind, I guess turned me around. I, I, I thought somebody else hit me then real hard, but that must have been when I hit Bobby. I heard somebody say that I hit Bobby after I got turned around, so I'm sure that's probably what it was. Are you gonna have to park it down? I haven't looked at the car, I don't know. I, it, not unless we absolutely have to, I'll assure you of that. Well, Phil Parsons in the car. Now, take a look at the damage on the car as he climbs out. The car, the rear of the car completely collapsed back here, but the important safety feature, the fuel cell is still intact. No fuel leaking from underneath that car. In the back of the car, it's completely shoved in. You see Phil getting out, surveying the damage here. Some of the sheet metal bent, battered. He is completely okay. The driver's compartment intact, but the fuel cell did save that. No fire, no fuel on the racetrack. A good safety feature here in Winston Cup competition. Thank you, Jerry, for that report from Phil Parsons. Bobby Allison's car, meanwhile, has been loaded onto a flatbed and is being taken off the racetrack. And it's a very badly damaged Miller American Buick that Bobby Allison climbed out of, fortunately uninjured. But we're concerned about some spectators who may have been hit by flying debris. The track security and the Talladega Sheriff's Department is on the scene trying to keep the crowd under control as they assess the damage and possible injuries. That is the uh, area of the crash, and it is just almost almost underneath Harold Kinder's uh, starting uh, area. Well, let's uh, once again go down to the pit area for this report. And I'm, I'm with Benny Gertel. He's team manager for Stavola Racing. Benny, you were close to that accident. Uh, yeah, I was up there uh, spotting for Bobby, and when he comes through the trial over the right rear tire blew, and that uh, the air picked up the car and sent him right into the grandstands and ripped on portion of the fence and then when he came back off back onto the track spun around a few more times and he said he was all right for now and then here come Phil Parsons and hit him again in the door and then I asked him how he was and he still said he was all right so that's racing I guess how about the grandstand could you see or is everybody okay up there everybody in the grandstand uh, seemed to be okay from my vantage point but I'm not really sure Dick well that's good news we certainly hope everybody is okay Benny or tell he was real close to that thing he said it almost got him all right, thank you, Dick. Uh, 22 laps have been completed here at Talladega out of 188. 
And that's uh, kind of uh, ironic because it was the number 22 car of Bobby Allison's that started this multi-car accident here in the Tri-Oval. There is Allison's car being taken back to the garage area on the flatbed. Under a red flag at Talladega with 22 of 188 laps completed, there are the top five, Terry Labonte, Bill Elliott, Davey Allison, Buddy Baker, and Dale Earnhardt. We are under red because of a terrific crash here on the Tri-Oval as Bobby Allison's car blew a tire, but Bobby is okay. You can see him walking around right there, smiling now after gathering his thoughts and calming down just a bit. Well, Bobby Allison just walked out of the infield care center. First of all, Bobby, are you okay? I'm okay. Uh, very thankful to the good Lord that I'm not hurt, and I hope nobody else down there is hurt too bad. What happened down there? Uh, I think I ran over something. I couldn't really tell. Something bounced under the car, and then uh, the tire uh, exploded. And uh, I think I ran over something and cut my right rear tire down, and it spun the car in the tri -oval there, and up in the air it went, and round backwards, so just nothing I could do. Any recollect recollection of hitting the fence or who might have hit you when you came down? Well, I knew I hit the fence, and uh, yeah, I recall that quite well. I don't know who else was involved, and I'm uh, very disappointed anyone was involved. I'm very sorry about that. Well, Bobby Allison, a true champion, even in defeat here at Talladega. 